uh, the establishment in a big way and became a full-time troublemaker and whistleblower. Uh, I'd had opportunities in the past. The first time I recognized that the government could lie to the American people was over the assassination of John F. Kennedy. I mean, I think that anyone who watches the film of Kennedy's head snapping back from the impact of the fatal shot and his wife climbing on the back of the car to retrieve parts of his skull. For them to believe that the only shots came from behind, from a lone gunman in the school book depository, is ludicrous. Just as ludicrous as someone who hears the BBC broadcasting news of the collapse of Building 7 20 minutes before it happens and seeing film of that building, 47-story building, coming down in what appears to be a perfect controlled demolition of an intact building with no visible fires. To see that and believe the Bush administration's official conspiracy theory about 9-11. The difference is that in 1963, we still had some free press, and almost everyone alive at that time heard about the grassy knoll. But by 2001, the corporate monopoly media was tight as a drum, and almost no one has heard of Building 7, much less seen videos of it that absolutely prove that the stories we have been told by our government are out and out lies and physical impossibilities. Building 7 I often hear about. No plane hit Building 7. Why did Building 7 come down? What do you tell people? What is Building 7? Or what it was it Building 5 or the building that wasn't hit by the plane? Building 7. I have no idea. I've never heard that. We're in a situation now where most of the American people have been uh, hoodwinked by the big lies of our government. And a great many people who actually work in the government are likewise hoodwinked by those big lies. Some of the people who tell those lies even believe in them. Well, it's time that those of us who know the truth speak it out frequently and loudly we must convince the American people and people in our government and even the President of the United States that these lies and the evil deeds which flow from them are destroying this nation and that they must rise up, all of us must rise up as one and say no, no to the lies, no to the myths, no to the evil actions, no to the Patriot Act, no to the wars of aggression, and no to taking away our liberties given us in the Constitution. We must tell the truth because only the truth can preserve this nation and restore our freedom. Now, having fought Star Wars for so many years and having succeeded in keeping weapons out of space, I've been very, very concerned about the expansion of so-called missile defense into Eastern Europe encircling the Soviet Union or what is now Russia. Uh, missiles in Poland, radars in Czechoslovakia, these, I don't believe, have a legitimate purpose in protecting Europe or anybody else from nuclear missiles from Iran. Russia, as bad as they are now, having backslidden from democracy, they have a legitimate concern about those missiles in Poland, and my hope is that Obama 
who so far is letting this lunacy continue, will, and I've heard he's going to review the policy, and I certainly hope he does, because there are much better and cheaper ways and less threatening ways of defending against nukes from Iran. And I hope that Obama's review scuttles the missiles in Poland and the radar in Czechoslovakia. Yeah, I know we've promised those countries money, we've given all sorts of uh, stuff to them in order to be able to uh, deploy those weapons. Well, give them the money, but don't deploy the weapons because they make nuclear war more likely and they do not promote our national security. Now, many who voted for Obama are shocked and saddened by what is going on now. Uh, I'm not surprised because we knew before Obama was elected that his mentor, his foreign policy advisor, was Zbigniew Brzezinski. Uh, someone who comes from the old Chicago school that Brzezinski and Kissinger and all those folks had an inside track to Obama's ear. And so it isn't surprising that the chess game that Obama is playing is carrying out what Brzezinski wrote about years and years ago. We need to, again, reach out to Obama uh, and certainly to our so-called representatives in Congress who unfortunately don't represent us but the big money interests that feed them. We must reach out and say no to this chess game. Uh, it is dangerous. It uh, doesn't promote our security. It uh, weakens it and it is only designed to support imperial aims and those imperial aims are not for the United States of America. They are using the United States of America to promote an imperialism of these global elites, multinational corporations and banks. We don't want to live under a world government of the corporations, by the corporations, and for the corporations. The United States must return to a constitutional foreign policy where we seek not to be king of the hill nor subservient to the World Trade Organization, but simply seek to be a sovereign responsible member of the family of nations, nothing more and nothing less. When I ran for president in 2006, I discovered that there was not much difference between conservative Republicans and liberal Democrats, that those on the far left and the far right had the same concerns, the same issues, the same problems with our government. Both love our country but fear our government with good reason. Sometimes the left and the right use different language to discuss the same things. But we're one people and we need to understand that we have been artificially divided for far too long. The global elites have divided us into Democrat and Republican left and right, conservative and liberal. They have divided us with hot button issues like abortion and gay rights and gun control and prayer in schools. And by doing so, they have given us, the electorate, the illusion that we have a choice. When in reality, both the Republican and Democratic parties are owned by the same global elites. And on issues that matter to those global elites, they act as one. 
when it comes to conducting a war of aggression for an oil pipeline, there's no difference between Democrat and Republican. When it comes to signing a trade deal to drive down wages and increase profits of the corporations, there's no difference between Republican and Democrat. Remember, it was Bill Clinton who gave us NAFTA, and it was Al Gore, the hero of the environmental movement, who was the hatchet man for the Clinton administration to cram NAFTA down the throats of a reluctant Congress. This is not a party issue. This is not a left-right issue. The question is not, should we have big government or little government? The question is, who should government serve? And it should serve the people. And it hasn't been doing it. And it still isn't doing it. And changing from Republican to Democrat or Democrat to Republican is not going to change that. The only thing that will change that is the American people understanding the truth, understanding what's happened to them, understanding that their wages now are a third of what they were in the 1950s, understanding that they have been stolen from massively, not by the government in taxes, but by the corporations with overhead and profits. The overhead and profits of the, that the corporation makes on the back of workers is about 200 times what the government takes in taxes. And the American people, having been educated as to the truth, then have to rise up and demand and get a government that starts serving them. We need a change and it isn't going to come from Democrats and Republicans. It has to come from the American people. The enemy we face is not a Democratic president or a Republican president. It's a global conspiracy. Yes, a conspiracy. Whenever more than two people get together to plan evil, illegal deeds, it is a conspiracy, and that's what we're facing. Uh, the, at the top of this conspiracy are a, a handful of ultra-wealthy multi-billionaires in the world. Some of them have been conspiring for more than a century. Their tools are the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergers, the Trilateral Commission, and they have tools in other countries as well. And then, of course, there are thousands of think tanks and entities which serve their purposes. Their ultimate goal is to get all power unto themselves and to enrich themselves beyond all reason. Well, most of them are already wealthy beyond all reason, but the more wealth the, you get, it seems, the more you want. And they're never satisfied. They want more. More wealth and more power. And this drive causes them to want absolute control over us, the people. That's not what America was founded to be. We were founded to be a government where the people are sovereign. And we must be that again. There's been a dangerous trend